Good morning. This is Adam Wise of Android Technology, an Oxford Instruments company. And in this short video, I'd like to show you what the Accumulate acquisition mode in Solace does and how it differs from a single scan measurement of the equivalent exposure time. The default measurement mode in Solace is single scan, which reads a single image from the camera sensor. We also have Accumulate, which adds together multiple individual images from the sensor to create a single final image with more signal. This can be useful in many circumstances. For example, adding together multiple exposures in memory lets you get around the maximum number of counts a single camera pixel can collect, effectively increasing the dynamic range of the measurement. However, it also involves multiple sensor readouts, each with their own associated readout noise. I've created a little infographic here that shows the difference. Long exposure, relatively long exposure, is a long period of exposure followed by one readout cycle at the end. And this readout takes some time and generates some noise. For accumulation, there are shorter exposures, followed by readout, followed by a shorter exposure, followed by another readout, and so on until you hit the number of accumulations that you've specified. So here I have a live video of a, an object on my desk that's illuminated, and I'm capturing images with an exposure time of one millisecond. So you can see I've got quite a bit of noise, both shot noise and a little bit of readout noise. So as I mentioned, Readout noise is the noise in the image caused by reading the image off the sensor, as you might expect, as opposed to dark noise, shot noise, and so on. We'll cover noise sources more in depth in a later video. Our cameras have very low readout noise, but each additional image added to an accumulation increases the effective read noise. So here I'm looking at, as I mentioned, at my scene with a short exposure time, artificially low in this case, one millisecond, to bring out the read noise and shot noise and so on. Although I might need a short exposure for real, if I was capturing something at high speed or recording a fast event associated with the pulsed light source, to say. To get more counts and increase my signal to noise ratio, I can do one of two things right now. I can take a longer exposure or I can accumulate multiple exposures. So say I want to collect 100 times as much signal here. Well, I could go to 100 milliseconds from one millisecond and I'll do a single exposure with a longer exposure time now. So you can see the signal to noise ratio has gotten quite a bit better. I'm going to save this so we can compare it. Now I'll set up the equivalent exposure time in accumulations. So I'll go back to accumulate mode, put in a one millisecond exposure time, and do 100 millisecond exposures added together, 101 millisecond exposures added together. This overall will take a little bit more time because there's additional readout cycles to be done. And those each have some associated overhead. So here's my 100 accumulation image. And I'll save this. So you can see right off the bat, there's quite a bit more noise in this accumulated image, although it has the, total same, the same total amount of signal captured. And I'll set them up to have the same contrast. So you can probably see it right off the bat, but if I zoom in on some place, say here and here, you can see I've added through the accumulation process quite a bit more read noise, which shows up as grain in the image. And maybe I'll zoom in a little bit more to see if that might be obvious. I hope it, this isn't taken away by uh, video compression when I post it, but I, I think that even in the unzoomed image, you can see it. So the question is, why would you want to see, why would you want to do accumulation mode? Well, accumulation mode has a benefit at least one benefit, there are more, but this is one that I'd like to highlight for the moment. So go back, if I go back to single scan and say I did an exposure time of 100 milliseconds or 500 milliseconds maybe to make it interesting, I'm gonna take one image. And here's my new acquisition. So I'm already creeping up quite a bit towards saturation of the ADC here, the analog to digital converter. You can see I have about 40,000, 30,000 to 40,000 counts. If I wanted more signal out of this image, I could increase the exposure, say, by a factor of 10. And keep in mind, I'm starting at 500 milliseconds. So I go to five seconds, acquire an image. And this will take a few seconds. And I've saturated the ADC. So you can see that I'm losing a lot of information. And I'm saturated at 65.535 with the 16-bit ADC here. So I can't recover that contrast that I've lost. However, if I wanted to collect more signal using accumulation mode, I could go back to 500 milliseconds, where I still have the sensor's pixels not overwhelmed with light, 
and I could set up an accumulation and collect 10 accumulations or 10 exposures to give me the same exp uh, effective exposure time. And now I've got quite a bit more pixel, quite a bit more light at each pixel. And if you look at the actual values here, now they're in the hundreds of thousands of counts. I don't have to rely on the capacity of a single pixel and a single exposure. So I've done a measurement with effectively higher dynamic range. I'll talk about dynamic range more thoroughly in a following video. But for now, that's, I think I've made my point with the, uh, the advantages, at least a small subset of the advantages and disadvantages of accumulation mode. Uh, well, thanks for listening. If you have any questions about accumulation or measurements in general, or you'd like to do a virtual demo of one of our cameras, shoot me an email at a.wise at andor.com, or visit the Andor website for more information. All right, thanks and have a good rest of your day.